Hey guys, I'm going to do a little, uh, hopefully short video about some of my findings on rum, why I'm so interested in it, and why I think it is definitely the future um, of our topical antiandrogens. Um, so, RU58841, um, or rum, is a prodrug for RU58841, and what that means is um, a prodrug is a form of a drug that doesn't become active until it reaches its desired location. So understanding a prodrug um, is very important to um, piecing that, that together with why it's so important for our application, especially with RU58841. So as I was saying, the prodrug has uh, benefits of more selectivity um, in where the drug is going. Um, it has, you know, it can target the cells that it needs to go into. In this case, we're trying to move it into cells, um, just into cells so that it can um, block the antigen receptor. And, second, and secondly, prodrugs have lower systemic effects due to this. So, you know, those are some big concerns that people have had with RU5841 um, are the systemic side effects. Will it get to the bloodstream? There are people at certain doses that report these things brain fog, you know, all sorts of, you know, um, side effects because RU5841 can get into the bloodstream. Whereas a pro-drug variation of RU5841 can not only better uh, treat the androgenetic alopecia because it's getting into the cells, but it has lower uh, systemic side effects. So it really is the best of both worlds. And I'm going to give a rundown of some of the basics, a real basic understanding of why this is. So if we look at RU5841, um, this is just the molecular structure here, you know, we can already begin to see that it's got some really polar, uh, a really polar end. Um, it's got a fluorinated group and a nitrile. Um, so you can understand why this just, um, if this were put into the skin, it would be very unlikely to be taken up by a cell, which of course the cell is surrounded by a phospholipid bilayer. So how do you get around that? How do you uh, like I've been saying all along in all of my videos, how do you more selectively put RU5841 into the cells so it can begin to block the androgen receptors and do its duty? How do you do that? Well, you have to make it more lipophilic, um, more lipid-seeking so that it can cross these phospho phospholipid bilayers into the cell. So what RUM is, is a prodrug where they, through esterification, um, have added, you know, a hydrocarbon um, or a long lipid tail so that it is more lipophilic in nature. Um, so that gives it the ability now to, you know, more readily be taken up by uh, or, or through the cell membrane where it will be metabolized back into the potent antiandrogen known as RU5841. So you see now that um, we can target the, uh, the cells, get the drug into the cells, have it cleaved and put back into the active state of RU5841 where it can go and block the antigen receptor. So it's really beautiful just in nature, how, uh, you know, of the substance, how that all works. Um, and, you know, to back this up, I'm going to talk about something that um, it kind of, you know, stopped me and, and made me a little curious in the discussion section um, of this paper. Um, I, I was a little concerned at first, I wasn't sure exactly what they meant, but it says, most interestingly, rum permeation of full thickness pixie and, and reconstructed epidermis was not observed, irrespective of the applied vehicle or the type of acceptor fluid. RU5841 permeation, which might result from ester cleavage with the skin followed by permeation to the acceptor fluid, was also not detected. So what do they mean by that? Um, when they're saying that rum was not very permeable in the skin, um, I was a little bit confused because then they go to say, you know, how great it is, how, you know, all the benefits of that. I was like, well, if it's not, you know, permeable, what do they mean by that? Well, that's exactly what we're looking for. The fact that on these, uh, you know, cross-sectional um, skin slides, that when they applied RU5, or rum, they didn't get much that came out the other side. They didn't get much that permeated around. Um, and they go on to continue that um, 
probably um, the antiandrogens bind with high affinity to cutaneous proteins. Um, so they're saying that because we didn't see much permeation, um, you know, that's most likely the result of the fact that RD5841 is being taken up by, you know, being directed into the cells um, and, you know, using the um, RD5841 to block the androgen receptor. And that's why you don't see it um, pass all the way, and that's why you don't get the systemic effects, because it's being used where it's supposed to be used, and thus not carried into the bloodstream. So that right there was so interesting to me, and so crucial for putting this all together. And I, I like to think of it this way, of course, you know, for some of you this may be completely obvious, but, you know, and this is way overly simplified, but, you know, we look at the skin as these, you know, giant cells here, you know, there's some um, intercellular space, if you have a standard RU molecule that has no, it's not lipophilic in nature, you know, it will, you know, if it, ma if it makes it into the skin, not be readily absorbed, that was a really bad arrow, not be readily absorbed by these, uh, these cells, which need to uptake it in order to block the antigen receptors that are inside the cells. It would much prefer you know, to move between the cells and not be taken up. That leads to systemic effects. That leads to RU5841 getting in your bloodstream. What ROM does is because it is lipophilic in nature, when it is in the, uh, the skin, it will selectively pass into the cells, where then it will be cleaved and turned into RU5841. So it only becomes active where it's needed, and you're not getting the systemic effects of the traditional RU, which can go into your bloodstream. So, it's safer in nature, and it is targeting the cells, moving into the cells, and becoming active once inside of them. So, it's amazing. It's just a beautiful, beautiful design, um, and I really think our results are going to be so excellent because of this. It says, with respect to systemic side effects in men, the poor permeation appears most important. Uh, it just goes to reinstate that. And finally, uh, let me see if I can find it. This result is well in accordance with previous studies, this is exactly what I'm talking about here, showing that um, lipophilicity, not only of the drug, um, but of the carrier, improves drug uptake by the follicle. So there again, it just reinstates time and time again that having this you know, added chain that makes it more lipophilic really helps delivery and targeting um, and reduction of systemic effects. So I really wanted to put this video together just so you guys can get an idea of, you know, what we're talking about here and, you know, the great potential for this. I hope this has, um, you know, help, helped you guys with that, at least on a real basic level. Um, so I guess that concludes this video. Um, feel free to leave comments and uh, definitely be in touch with me. Uh, send me PMs, anything. Um, of course, I'll probably post this up on the forums, so there we'll be able to openly discuss it. Um, but I think it's really important that this video be made so that people can begin to understand the importance of a pro-drug RU5841. Thanks.